Most countries have a national postal service, and here in the UK we have the Royal Mail. Established over 500 years ago, they've recently decided that the process of putting a dead tree inside another dead tree and sticking to it an even smaller dead tree with a picture of a dead monarch on needs to be modernised. To bring stamps into the 21st century, they're adding barcodes, which apparently will pave the way for innovative services for customers. But seeing as all a barcode does is store data, I was wondering, can you fit a game into one? To be clear, I'm not talking about just encoding a link to a game or a script like Python or JavaScript. I want to embed a fully self-contained native executable. So how much space do we have to work with? Well, looking at the documentation provided by Royal Mail, the barcode is a data matrix type ECC200, specifically a type 29, which can store a whopping 70 characters. That's not a lot of data, but we can come back to that. First things first, I need to pick a game. I may be almost a decade too late to capitalize on the craze, but Flappy Birds is arguably one of the simplest games to make. Now the second thing is, how do I do the rendering? Interfacing with SDL, SFML, GLFW, or any of the other acronymed media libraries would introduce a lot of boilerplate and external libraries. This will bloat my executable, and I'm looking to create something small and self-contained. Luckily, in Linux land, everything is a file, and that includes the special slash dev slash FBO file. This is managed by the kernel and represents the pixel data on the screen. What does this mean? Well, one, you can take a screenshot by copying this file. And two, we can write this file to put pixel data on the screen. To demonstrate this, I'll write some random data to this file. Perfect. So now we can create a full screen game by just writing to this file. I needed a starting point, so I knocked up a basic version in C. And let me tell you, it is some of the worst C I've ever written. It's all in one file. There is minimal error handling and there's even a triple nested loop which uses a go-to in order to break out of it. But functionally, it's very simple. I open the special FBO file, I mmap it so I can write to it, I mmap the second buffer as a back buffer so that I don't get screen tearing when I keep writing to this file as the kernel is trying to read from it, I find a bunch of sprites that I want to render, I do a non-blocking read on stood in to see if the user has pressed the enter key. So basically the player sprite will keep dropping unless they press the enter key, in which case it will get shoved up a bit. I do some basic 2D collision detection between the player sprites and the block sprites. And then to actually render the screen, I copy the back buffer to the mapped in FDO file. And that all compiles to a mighty 16,448 bytes or 235 stamps. The binary brings in a lot of chuck. Luckily, we can use some compiler flags to reduce the size of the executable and remove things we don't need, such as libc, the C standard library. Of course, without libc, we can't call any standard functions. It's easy enough to code up a basic mem copy, but what about all the system functions like open and nmap? Let's talk about syscalls. Any resource that the operating system manages, files, sockets, threads, cannot be accessed from user processes. Instead, you have to ask the kernel to do these operations on your behalf. So if I want to open a file, rather than faffing around with virtual file systems and inodes and disk drivers, I instead ask the kernel to do it for me. These functions the kernel exposes to us are called system calls or syscalls, and they're executed by special assembly instructions. However, having to write assembly every time you want to execute one of these syscalls isn't very user friendly. So the Linux libc provides a wrapper around all these, which is what the man pages detail. But I've removed libc, so I need to go down the assembly route. Now we're down to 14,128 bytes, which is 202 stamps. We can use a tool called obstump to look at all the sections in our binary. Text is important because that's where all our code lives, but there's all these extra ones like GNU, hash and comment, which aren't technically needed. Let's talk about ELFs. The executable and linkable file format, or ELF, is the file format for Linux binaries. In other words, for Linux to actually load and execute your code, it has to be packaged into an ELF. You can see that what we've already built is an ELF by using the file command. When we compile and link our program, GCC builds an ELF for us, but it includes a lot of optional extras. What if we built our own ELF from scratch with just the bare minimum needed? So that's what I did. Using an article I found about creating small ELF files from scratch, I laid out the minimum byte structure for an ELF in a file and added some code that just exited with a fixed value. A 
At this point I opted for a 32-bit binary as the ELF structure is technically slightly smaller and I hoped that overall this would produce a smaller footprint. The problem with this approach is that I had to handwrite everything in assembly so I slowly started porting all my C code over to x86. I cut a few corners and simplified the game a little bit so there's no randomness and there's just one set of blocks, however arguably it's still the same game and it clocks in at a lean 737 bytes or 11 stamps. Realistically it was unlikely I was going to be able to shrink this by over 90% to fit on one stamp, especially when all the required parts of the elf are 84 bytes. But I did want to see just how small I could make it. I approached the space optimization in three passes. The first was structural, so I combined several memory allocations into one big buffer which saved 22 bytes. I replaced my hand-rolled mem copy with a pwrite64 syscall which allowed me to write the back buffer to the FBO file in 24 less bytes. So I simplified the collision detection as I just need to check if the player is above or below the block heights when it's in range which saves up another 53 bytes. The second pass was code. I used every trick I could think of to make the code smaller and infinitely less readable. I didn't bother resetting arguments for syscalls if they were the same from the previous call so that saved 21 bytes. Rather than loading minus 1 into a register I just decremented it by 1 as I knew it was already 0 and that saved 4 bytes. I needed 5 to be in one register but I knew another register already had 3 so I just swapped them and incremented twice, that saved 1 byte. It got pretty crazy. So there are two places I need to zero the EDX register. Normally you would do this with the instruction XOR EDX EDX as any number XORed with itself will result in zero. However, there's another instruction called CDQ which is only one byte and that doubles the value in EAX. This doesn't seem related, however, it has a side effect that copies whatever the value in bit 31 of EAX is into every bit of EDX. So if we know that EAX is small, which we do, then CDQ technically zeroes out EDX and it's only one byte. So with all these tricks done, we're down to 515 bytes, but there's still one more pass we can do. Data. So as part of the game, we need to store several bits of data, such as the X, Y, width, height and color of the blocks and the player, as well as the string slash dev FBO, as well as some other bookkeeping items. So the game now is where can I poke these bits of data to reduce the overall size of the binary? So I just needed to find two series of four blanks that represented a valid color. So what we're actually seeing in the game for the player is the elf header and for the blocks is the first four bytes of the code all represented as RGBA values. After that I needed to get a bit more creative. Whilst the structure of the elf header is fixed it turns out Linux doesn't verify or care about certain parts of it. There's a run of nine zeros right at the beginning for ABI version and padding but we can nicely slot our file path for the frame buffer in there. We can use any part of the header we want to store our global data buffer address in, as by the time we are allocating it the header has been passed and is no longer needed. And we can stuff the player data and our timeout data into another few unused parts. And with that, our final score is... 499 bytes. That's just 8 stamps, and compared to the C version, by today's rates, that represents a saving of £249.70. But the low level fun doesn't stop here. To see how I reverse engineered a classic Windows game, check out this next video.